Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of the Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about the Ancestry DNA Ethnicity Update and joining me is Anna Swain, the Ancestry DNA Program Manager. Anna, I love that you're always so willing to be here with us for this. <laughs> My pleasure. So today we're going to talk about the Ethnicity Update and we're just going to dive right in. So let me just start with just some um, information or some facts and then we'll have Anna walk us through some of the screens and some of the things you can find on your DNA update. So first, um, it's important for you to understand that the Ancestry DNA Reference Panel contains 3,000 DNA samples from people in 26 different global regions. So that means that Ancestry um, DNA has found 3,000 people who have DNA um, from, from one of these global regions, and we're using that to compare against your DNA to determine if you have DNA from one of those regions. Um, that's an increase, actually, in how, many, in how many regions, do you know, did we have before? Four, not, yeah. not that many, <laughs> right? So we've increased the number of regions and the sample size. Now here we've also increased the, um, or changed a little bit the way that we compare your DNA to everyone else's or to that reference panel. We now run 40 independent analyses of your DNA against that reference panel. So what you're seeing uh, on your DNA results for ethnicity is actually an average of those 40 independently run tests. And we also show you the range, and we'll show you in just a minute here where you can click and see that. And then if there's one thing you remember from today, and this is the only thing you remember, um, if you want to learn more about um, how DNA works in general or how Ancestry DNA works specifically, there is a lot of information available, and there's a lot of information available on your Ancestry DNA page. So click and read, and click and read, and click and read. <laughs> um, we're gonna have Anna now walk us through um, some of those click and read things, right? <laughs> so here is um, a view of my DNA results. So can you, Anna, just explain what we're looking at here? Yes, um, and, and to add to that, um, you know, just be patient. We, you know, we, we hope that as you go and you learn more, that you'll just be patient with yourself and take the time to really dive in and, and understand more. So what you're looking at here, Krista, is your own, your DNA homepage. So after you, you've logged in, you clicked on the DNA homepage, look, click to, to view your ethnicity results, and this is what's populated with the page. So now you can see you're 100% European. <laughs> I'm very white, yes. <laughs> and you have three major uh, regions, Great Britain, Ireland, Europe, West, and then you have your trace regions that are below. You can click on any one of those and it's going to populate with what we talked about, your range. So we've, we've given you a prediction or estimate of 50% and that is how we calculated that was we took your DNA, we ran it like you said before, 40 uh, different times. We got a range so you could be as little as 16% or as, as much as 82% but we've placed you as a 50% because it took the average. Okay. And you can click, and as you click on them, then it's going to populate with all the Great Britain information, so the primary locations, and then a, a slew of information underneath that. You can see how you compare it to a typical native, which is kind of interesting. So, some really fun information, how we calculate what a typical native looks like. Um, and then you can read below. Even, even our Great Britain population, because it's so diverse, you'll find... Uh, this graph being educational on what DNA these these uh, these individuals who are in the reference panel also are made up of. So even though they're British, they still have amounts of other type exactly. of DNA. Exactly, because it's such a heavy, um, you know, diverse location and a lot of you know migration and so forth came in and out. They themselves have quite the diverse for ethnicity. Yeah, a lot, a lot there. <laughs> a lot. And so then you can continue to read about the region. We've, we've tried to really provide a historical context so that we can see how, you know, how migrations came in out, how... Um, where some of these people are coming people, from, it looks like. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of historical value so that you can get, get the concept of um, 
people traveled in and out quite a bit. Yeah, so just for Great Britain here as an example, right, it looks like um, this first section talks a little bit about some of the, the Roman invasion or Roman conquering that occurred over time. Then we've got some information about when Germanic tribes invaded and where they came from, um, some the Viking invasion, right? So what that tells me is that Great Britain over time has accumulated DNA from all over Europe. Mm -hmm. um, and that may be why there is so much diversity in British DNA, right? Exactly. Exactly. So this is great information with some really great maps. Um, and like I said earlier, click and read, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the message today, which mm -hmm. is we have tried to provide you with as much information as possible um, about every one of your regions. And so if I were to click on Ireland, my map's going to change and the information underneath that's going to change. So um, click on each one of these regions in your ethnicity and look at the range and then also check the map, see what areas it covers, and then read about what other information there is to know about people who have DNA from that particular region. Mm -hmm. And then you can see that uncertain is, is gone and we've, we've shown you the trace regions. So you can click on trace regions and see um, your lower percentages for the different groups. So yeah, so I have some trace regions here. Um, and trace regions, do we have a threshold for that at all that you know of? For the lab? Like how we decide what is what goes in that trace region oh, bucket? So, so if it shows up at all, so you can see just from the range, you had anywhere from zero to eight percent, but we, we you know we gave you the estimate of four percent, and that's all determined on the 40 times your DNA was ran. Okay. So if it showed up at all, um, and it provided an average of more than well, because all of the trace regions are like zero to a zero to percent. something. Got so it. it was it was present. It just um, it just wasn't consistently present. It, exactly. Got it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. And and even with these trace regions, we still provide that same information though, so that people can understand what it, where that what what makes up that region, what information is available for that location, mm -hmm. all of that. And what's worthy to know is you know this is a dynamic process. The science will continue to update, and these regions may or may not change throughout time as we get more information. Okay, excellent. Now, talk to me a little bit about this question mark up here. I know some people have explored it thoroughly. Some people didn't even know they could click on it. So I've clicked on it. This is what I see. What am I looking at this here? This is exciting because this is a lot of information, and this should be your home base for going and learning more about your DNA results. Um, you have uh, quite a few options to learn and, and investigate. And we've labeled them with a question. The first one is the ethnicity estimate introduction video that everyone saw at the beginning. You can come back here and, and watch it again if you clicked out or you maybe missed it. Um, and then when you click on your ethnicity um, groups, all the different graphs and everything is broken down and gives more information in these little um, tutorials, these little guides. And so you can learn about how we, get, how we determine the ethnicity update. You can see the map, you can see the regions, uh, you can get into, um, this is showing. We actually walk through the process of how we gathered how those we, samples. Exactly. Where know, they came from. and <laughs> Reached out to you know, quite a few different groups of people uh, living in the region so that we can compare your DNA to to those regions. Excellent. So yeah, so a lot of really great resources here. Um, how the ethnicity estimate is determined and how the range is calculated are probably the two articles that I would recommend that everybody read for sure. Um, there is some information about um, the average admixture, which we, we mentioned earlier, and then why you might have more or less of a certain region. And then we have this white paper. <laughs> <laughs> This white paper is great. I mean, th our scientists put a lot of time and effort into providing us everything about what what Ancestry DNA does. So, so this white paper, I haven't printed it out. I just read it on my screen, but I would imagine it's probably fifty or sixty pages worth of information, and it is just straight scientific information. And here's the deal: um, I am probably like the world's least sciencey person. <laughs> um, my my best friend's a biologist, and she frequently laughs at me <laughs> when I try to explain science things. But I sat down with this white paper. I made sure that I had quiet and some time um, because I really wanted to concentrate. And I really wanted to understand this. And I read through the whole thing in one setting. Nice. I know. Impressive. <laughs> um, and I actually understood a lot of it. I have since gone back and read it two more times. And 
um, I, I, I wish there was a way to highlight it on the screen, right? So I could say, I want to remember this piece of information. Yes. But, um, but it really helped me understand the science behind, um, but behind DNA in general. It also helped me understand the science behind the ethnicity up, um, estimates. And it helps me understand what some of the limitations are of DNA in general, just where mm -hmm. we're at with the science and mm -hmm. where we hope to be able to go with science eventually. Exactly. Cool. So Thanks. really great information if you are interested in um, doing it. I Like I said, I recommend you have some time and some quiet <laughs> because it does require a little bit of concentration, especially if you're not a science person. Um, and, be, and be patient with yourself. If you don't get it right away and you really want to, just keep keep at it and you know ask questions and hopefully we can help guide you through it. Yeah, and so there are a few places that people can ask questions. Uh, if you're not familiar with our community forums, if you click on the Get Help button here, uh, anywhere on Ancestry.com, you can actually visit the, um, the community forums or the, the community, um, yeah, it's the community forum. That's what it's called. <laughs> I kept trying to call it something else. Uh, and there is a, there are boards here, an entire board here about Ancestry DNA, where you can go in and read questions other users mm -hmm. have asked and the responses that have come from the community or from employees here at Ancestry.com. You can also ask questions if the question that you're looking for has not been answered. And Anna, I'm, I'm pretty sure Anna monitors those boards. I monitor these boards as well as some of our uh, member services. Yep. So, so that's how you can ask questions. I'm just going to um, just make a quick reference here. I've had both of my parents tested. And so one of the things that I think is interesting uh, in this process is I can see exactly here's my parents, you know, what my parents have as far as ethnicity goes. And then I can compare that to my own um, inheritance, what I inherited from them. And it's a really interesting thing. So we've talked before about having multiple people tested in your family. Uh, if both of your parents are still living, uh, I would strongly encourage that you do that. If you have any grandparents living, have them tested as well, because it's a, it gives you this really clear picture of the way that DNA is inherited. Um, let me just wrap up with a story. Uh, I, it's not really about ethnicity per se, but it is um, about ancestry DNA, and it's kind of an exciting story for me. Some of you um, who've heard me speak in the last couple of months may have heard me share this. I had a match show up on my mom's um, on my mom's DNA test, and it showed up as a third cousin match. And when I looked at his results, he only had three people in his tree. <laughs> Uh, that just kills me, right? And I almost, I almost didn't click on review match because <laughs> he only had three people in his tree. But he was a third cousin, and that was a really close match, and so I wanted to look at it. And so I pulled up his tree, and I have to tell you, it was at 11 o'clock at night that I did this, and really we should never do anything genealogically at 11 o'clock at night because then we're not in bed for hours. <laughs> but uh, here are the three people he had in his tree, himself, and he was the one who took the DNA test, his father and his grandfather. Now, luckily, his father has a little bit of a unique name, and he had some information about his father. And so I went on Ancestry.com. I actually went to the 1930 census. I figured he'd be an adult by then. He'd be married. Maybe I could find some information about him. I found a couple of men with that name uh, and about the right age living in about the right place. And so I made note of each of them. And then I went looking for a marriage record for each of them and, and very quickly discovered that this man was married to my great grandmother's sister. And uh, my great grandmother actually passed away when my grandfather was two years old. So he barely knew his mother. My mom never knew her grandmother. But we've heard stories about her our whole life. And so uh, my mom actually named me after her. And yet we have no connection with that whole side mm -hmm. of the family. And so I sent this guy a message because you can do that through Ancestry DNA. I just sent him a message and said, um, I, if I've got the correct Merle McGill, he was married to Vera Clark, and that means that you know you and my mom are cousins, and I'd love to to connect and to share information. He friended me on Facebook the very next morning. <laughs> um, luckily, I have a unique enough name that people can usually find me pretty easily. And then that next day, he sent me this photo. Now, it's not the world's greatest photo, um, but I am so excited to have this in my possession now. Even though he only had three people in his tree online, he actually had quite a bit of family history research that he had not yet put online. And this is a picture of my great-grandmother as a child. The only picture I had ever seen of her was her wedding photo. Wow. 
Um, this is her two older sisters and their father. And their father is actually a huge, huge brick wall in our family right now. His name is John O'Brien, and he may have been born in Ireland or Ohio, depending <laughs> on which lie of his you believe. And he may have been 93 or 99 or 102 when he died. We're also not really sure about that. Um, lots of conflicting information on his life that has made it difficult. But now we have this DNA connection, and he and I can now work together to look for other people who might match us through some of this same side of the family. And we may find our Irish connection yet through John O'Brien. Either way, um, we now have this photo, um, a copy of this photo in our family because of this DNA connection. And so, you know, the ethnicity stuff is great and I love it and it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But for me, the thing about Ancestry DNA is the opportunity to connect with family members. Um, it's bringing more people into family history that might not have considered doing genealogy research in mm -hmm. some of the more traditional ways. And even if somebody just has three people on their tree. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a lesson of you just have to try all avenues. DNA provides us that tool to exhaust more resources. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't have those kind of breaks in traditional research all the time. Whereas as, constant, as more and more people get tested, we have the opportunity to, to use it as a tool. And like you said, I mean, you easily could have just dismissed three people in your tree. Yeah. And you didn't. That's awesome. Yep. And you got your mother tested. I did, yes. So I See, knew. <laughs> so and that showed a closer match. Yes, because he showed up on a fourth cousin, cousin for you. list for me. Yeah. See, benefits. Yes, absolutely. Good story. <laughs> okay. Well, Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have you with us when we talk about DNA. Um, this is, uh, we're getting towards the end of the month. And so I'm actually putting together the November live stream calendar. So if you have any suggestions for topics you'd like to see discussed in future shows, please send me an email at ask at ancestry.com. If you're not sure what we've discussed in the past, you can go to our YouTube channel. The URL is there at the bottom of the screen. Look through some of those topics. If there's something I haven't talked about or touched on or something you'd like to see updated or more in depth, please send me an email with that suggestion. And then that calendar, will be up on our Facebook page on the events tab sometime in the next week or so. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.